so hello everyone so i'm i'm dhruvo dutta choudhury i'm a postdoc at hebrew university uh, so avishai nicely uh, told us about how we can have uh, black holes in our fb clusters and how they can okay sorry sorry about that uh, yeah so we heard about how we can have uh, So, so we heard about how we can have uh, seed black holes in the in FFB clusters, and uh, so I'm going to talk about the second second phase of that of the model that we just heard about. So, in the first phase, we have seed black holes in FFB cluster, and the second phase, these seed black holes can uh, migrate to the center of the disk because of because of dynamical friction. So, to start with, let let's think of a typical uh, typical FFB disk. Uh, so we have 100% uh, cluster star formation. So we have all these stars that are forming in all these clusters. So what I've done here is I have an idealized setup where I have put 2,000 clusters, each of each of mass 10 to 6 solar masses and a size of 7 parsec. And these are all arranged in a compact disk. So the total stellar mass is about 2 times 10 to 9, uh, and in a, in a radius of about so the half mass radius is about 300 parsec. And then we have an analytical halo, an NFW halo that is analytical. So uh, integrated star formation efficiency of about 20%. So that's the initial initial setup. So a typical FFB disk. So now, starting from this setup, if I so this is my this is my setup at t equal to zero. And now if I if I let this simulation run, so the resolution is not very good here. Uh, but we can see that so what happens is that these clusters there are these 2,000 clusters, and so the Rotation velocities are of the order of 200 kilometers per second. The dispersions are of the order of 100 kilometers per second in the disk. So what happens is that you have these clusters whose internal dispersions are about 10 kilometers per second, and they are colliding with each other with velocities of over 100 kilometers per second. So they just quickly sort of disrupt one another. And there is also the analytical NFW halo, which is also doing tidal stripping. So the clusters destroy each other over time scales of 100, 100 mega year. And so what we find is that so this nice smooth disk that is forming in the central in the central region. Some of the clusters do survive, but we have a nice smooth disk that is that is forming in the central region. So now let's think of so we have this we have this smooth disk, and now if we if we go back to Avishai's talk where we can form massive black holes, seed black holes of about 10 to our four solar masses inside these clusters, and now let's say these clusters are stripped and we have a smooth medium that is formed, so what will happen to these black holes? So these black holes can sink to the center of the disk by dynamical friction. So how do we estimate dynamical friction? So if you want to do an analytical estimate of dynamical friction from a smooth disk, so there's actually no textbook formula to do that. So starting from Chandrasekhar's, Chandrasekhar's dynamical friction formula, we, we came up with some scaling arguments that is, that is shown on the right there of how to estimate the dynamical friction in a disk. And so it depends on the, uh, on the derivative of the surface density. It depends on the mass ratio of the black hole, which is a small m, and enclosed mass within a radius r. Depends on r by h, which is the sort of the radius to the height ratio of the disk. And we have three different sort of scaling relations based on whether the disk is hot, whether it's cold, or can be even sort of razor thin disk. And so we did some, we did some simulations. So what is shown in, the, shown in the left here is some simulations that, so we test these formulas according to uh, self-consistent simulations. We take a Metzel disk and we put black holes at different radii of different masses. And so we find that there is a general agreement and we are actually working on quantifying this better with a, a more broader suite of simulations. So different surface densities, different, uh, different radius to height ratios. And then, once we have this analytical formula, so we test that and we believe that those formula are sort of generally correct, and then we can sort of use those formula on the right there to predict what will happen to a population of black holes as they will, as they will sink or decay to the center. And we find that we can sort of generally match the observation results. So in red are the observation results by Maolino, Hurricane, uh, Ubler, and sort of generally we can match. So starting from if we start at redshift 9 and then sort of as these black holes decay, and so we grow the mass in the central region, and we can generally match the observation. So one point to note is that dynamical friction in a disk is very efficient. So that is because of the fact that the, the 
velocities, with, with typical velocities with which the, the black holes are moving is of order of sigma and the sigma in a, in a disk is small. Uh, so therefore, dynamic friction is very efficient. So if you just look at what would happen due to a dark matter halo, so that those are the dashed lines there. So dynamical friction from a halo is not sufficient. It's weaker. So a disk dynamical friction is much stronger. So we are actually now uh, starting to sort of look at this in a more self-consistent way, where we start from clusters and then we have black holes inside these clusters, and then in a self-consistent way, as the black holes decay and the uh, sorry, as, as the, the clusters will strip, the black holes will decay and then take into account gravitational wave encounters, gravitational wave emission when black holes merge. So we want to do all of this in a self-consistent way and uh, so that's an ongoing work. So stay tuned and uh, come talk to me if you have questions and yeah. So thank you. Okay. So let's thank all the speakers of the morning again.